everyone, David Bombal here at Cisco Live with Zaskia. Zaskia is working on a really interesting topic, hacking AI. Those are my favorite topics. So tell us about what you're doing. Yeah, hi, so I'm Zaskia and uh, I'm doing a PhD on the offensive use of AI in, well, basically hacking. So what I'm looking at is how attackers could use AI to basically strengthen their attack, to make them more targeted, to make them more automated, and how that could actually also affect our threat landscape. I mean, there's a lot of information out there that we are sharing on social media, LinkedIn, and basically everywhere on the internet. And if you think for, uh, about phishing emails, for instance, and uh, the information that can be collected and then basically be abused and also strengthened with AI to make more targeted phishing emails. And I don't know, this might end, for instance, in uh, spare phishing attacks that are even stronger. And also, like, it's more easier for attackers to select the targets because it's just not so much effort anymore to do all the manual pre-work, but you can do a lot of things in an automated manner with AI. I think that's really scary. And also if we think about the professionalization in the hacking industry, a lot of use cases of AI in uh, normal organizations and businesses and where we want to simplify our processes and basically use AI to be more efficient. And if you think about the professionalization of the hacker industry, it's just the same. So also hackers, attackers can basically use AI to make their well, processes easier and to, to simplify some of their processes. So I think it's really um, something that's going to change. It's still pretty much theoretical. Actually, I'm working in my PhD on getting some uh, empirical evidence. I cannot share that yet with you, but I would love to share that with you in another episode. You shared with me offline that you can't share everything, even though you've been on some interesting places. When does your PhD stuff get released? Well, it depends a bit on the publication processes, but I hope that it's going to be released in, uh, in May and that I can tell you a bit more about it. So basically, I'm also using AI to do some analysis because with natural language processing being so advanced, I think it's also interesting to understand what the hackers or attackers are basically interesting in and to get some more threat intelligence out of it. My focus is really the offensive use of AI and which impact this is going to have on us. So tell us a bit about your journey. You were telling me offline, you've done some Cisco certs, but you've obviously got degrees. So tell us, how did you get into this and what are you doing these days? So basically I studied data science, but I didn't really know like where I would like to apply data science for research. So instead of directly doing a PhD, I started working at Cisco in networking technologies and I did my CCMP in enterprise networking. And I was actually thinking about doing the CCIE as started, but then I was like, okay, no, I'm gonna do a PhD first and CCIE afterwards. Currently, I'm working as a security engineer at Cisco and I'm working 60% and beside that, I'm doing my PhD. At work, my focus is really more on the defensive side, so on the products and also on the strategy. It's really more like cybersecurity from a defense point of view. And in my PhD, it's more from the like offensive point of view which I like because I think it's always interesting to have both perspectives and it's two different worlds that in the end like are important to understand if you want to build up an overall good security architecture. I want to learn AI. What do I do? I know nothing. Do I need to learn a language? That's a good question. People often ask me, are you good at Python? And I'm like, yes. yeah, well, I'm good at Python in data science. Like I'm not a software engineer in Python. And I think that's two different things. I mean, you can choose different ways. I, mean, I think the best idea is if you start with a basic course and just have a look in what you're interested in. Is it computer vision? Is it natural language processing? Is it like more simple um, machine learning, let's say? Like for instance, I don't know, are you interested in, in using it for um, some simple predictions? I, I think the use case is very important. And I mean, AI is a vast field. So just get an overall course, make sure that you get an overall understanding, that you know some Python um, to actually apply it. And then just get into the field that you love most. I think it's important to follow the, your passion. I mean, I often struggle with that because I focus a lot on natural language processing. And then you talk to someone who is like focusing on computer vision and you think like, oh, you have some common ground. Well, I mean, still quite different. So I think it's important to really focus on what you like and then to exchange with people and discover the field because there are so many use cases across all different kinds of industries. And I think in the cybersecurity industry, it's a very interesting application of AI. Do I need to learn pandas? I mean, to be honest, like there's so much code already written that you can just reuse. I don't think you need to be professional in that. I think if you really want to do it, I mean, you don't even need to be a programmer. You can do the combination of code, understand what you're doing. I think it's more important to actually understand what's behind it. Like what kind of model you apply to what kind of data 
and how you can tune your model. Like the Python thing, I think that's quite easy to, to figure out. And probably now with ChatGPT, I mean, it can even help you. So I think it gets even less important. But of course, it's a common ground that you need to actually like start, right? Um, but that's probably the easier part to, to get into it. What about maths? Do I have to learn math or maths? I mean, if you really want to understand each model and you really want to like also tune the model and work on the models and improve the models for your data, I think, yeah, definitely you do. For the most simple applications, you're good with a basic understanding of math and like that interest that you want to figure out why this is like this and something else is a different way. I think with a basic understanding, you can go a very long way. But of course, the better basics you have, the easier it will be, right? But I mean, if you don't know something, maybe just ask ChatGPT and it can explain it to you. Because I think, <laughs> I mean, I'm using ChatGPT actually quite often now because I feel like if I know something more or less and I get an answer, it's very, very good to like quickly help you with something. And then if I want to know the truth and I want to know where things come from, I go and research for it. I mean, it's a huge implication and makes things just so much faster. I think that's amazing. Um, but of course, never rely on it like totally at all because, I mean, what we often criticize a bit like, or, well, we, what I think is you don't have any reference. You don't really know like how it gained the knowledge, right? And I think, for instance, about my PhD where I have to cite every information, like actually you can trace it back. So never rely too much on it, but I think as a simplification or also to just get an understanding, like ask ChatGPT, like what should I learn? What kind of math and statistics basics should I get if I want to get into AI? It gives you an opinion and then you can even ask like why is this more important than uh, xyz for instance so i think these things are really cool to have some kind of discussion and get an opinion even though it's not really giving you an opinion right but you can still like ask for reasons so that's what i do i'm always sad if it's not available um but yeah so python mass if i want to go deep yeah Statistics. Statistics. You know, like if I'm interested in learning this, anything else I should look at? Like skills that I need to get? Is there a part? Well, data engineering, I think it's very important to understand your data. I mean, often we just try to apply models and we don't really understand the data. We are also not really sure if the data is accurately prepared. So I think it's really important to understand the data. And I think actually, like ideally, you also have some business understanding of where and how you can apply it. So for Offensive security. Is it supervised, unsupervised learning that you're seeing or is it like still early days? Well, it's different things. I think well, there's a huge interest in, in natural language processing. So more the deep learning um, part. Then uh, for the West, if you think about unsupervised learning, we have seen some research, for instance, on Twitter, like you could basically examine the topics people discuss about and then try to understand in a follow-up while well, we act on certain uh, answers that you're providing so i mean if you do topic modeling that's more unsupervised i mean if you just want to predict if someone is a good target or not i mean that's another different approach that you could use right and basically on previous attacks and their success rate you could see if a new victim like would be a good target, yes or no. I mean, of course, now I'm more focusing on attacks that are, well, in the individual private field than in the enterprise field. But I mean, even the enterprise field, you could probably do that. It's always like a question of how much time you invest as an attacker. And I think if you ask me about how you can defend on that, it's a difficult question. But the point is like, shouldn't we always defend like in a very good way and like make sure our security is at a good level and we are also aware about the risks of the maids that are coming in and the threats that are coming in. Does it even matter if something is powered by AI or not? Of course, it will be stronger. It will be easier to be automated. But what we see or what I see in a lot of discussions is if you had a lot of phishing maids, right? Do people focus on whether it was generated by AI or not? I mean, that's not the focus, right? The focus is does the product work or not? And the AI is more like enhancing technology. So I think what it might change is this red landscape and how attackers choose their victims. But in the end, in, at least in my opinion, I think the focus should be on the security defense in general and maybe while also making people more aware of what kind of data is actually, they actually share and what kind of risk that actually is. Because there's so much data, it's so vast, it's so easy to analyze with AI. So I think that's probably like one of the risks that I personally see. From a job point of view, did you find that having AI skills opened doors for you? So me personally, I never really wanted to just work in a pure AI job. I also didn't want to do my PhD only in AI because then you focus more on the, on the models, on the applications. And I really like on the AI side of the world, let's say. What I like about my PhD is 
that it's more an intersection of cybersecurity and AI. Yeah. So it's more an application. But of course, that also means that I'm not as focused on some AI models or on advancing natural language processing as I would be if I do my PhD just in NLP. So I think it's good to have that understanding. It's good to know about these well, new tools that we have available and to be able to apply them. But I also think this point that, oh, you, you know about AI, it's more like a business understanding that you have rather than, oh, go there and do this. Because that's also a lot of work, right? I mean, it's not like something, oh yeah, I have this data now, I use AI and I just deploy it. It takes a lot of work. And I mean, at the intersection, a bit difficult um, because usually you focus more on one thing or on the other thing or on the intersection. Um, but if you're on the intersection, you're a bit more superficial on the AI side because then you usually hand it over to the AI engineers. But that's my personal experience. I think there are also maybe different people out there that experience in a different way. You're going to be published in May, right? Around yes. May. Yeah, I Let's hope so. Let's get you back. You weren't, you weren't able to say too much. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff that we spoke about off camera. So we definitely want you back. And then you, maybe you can share a bit about dark web, other interesting things. That's all I can say. Thanks so much.